No matter how weird nature may be, all its phenomena can be explained. Though sometimes there might be an explanation, but zero logic. Today you'll find out why pumas drift on icebergs, how whales ended up in the desert and jungle, where the stork with a spear in his neck migrated, where reins of animals come from, and how underground creatures end up in the fish stomach. Imagine you went fishing and managed to reel in a largemouth bass from the water. Great catch. You pull out the lure and suddenly you see a mole looking at you from inside the fish. A damn mole! How would you react? Fisherman Monroe McKinney from Missouri was so shocked he nearly dropped the fish he was holding. The mole, of course, turned out to be dead, but how could it even end up inside the bass? Well, what species is it anyway? Apparently it's an eastern mole. They know how to swim. But this doesn't mean that moles will get into the water whenever they can. More likely the poor animal was pushed out by rain or simply dropped by some large bird. Some predators lure fish to the surface like that. Yes, they fish using moles. And then the bass only needed to swallow the poor mole. By the way, the bass didn't even have to feel hungry to do this. This fish can grab prey reflexively when they sense movement. Did the mole have a chance to survive? Only until it ended up inside the fish. Usually, unless we talk of a parasite, getting inside someone else means death. But don't tell Trevally that, because juvenile Trevallys literally get into jellyfish. This looks quite unusual. Few creatures can get exposed to jellyfish without risking their life and health. But these fish are not only hiding under the bells of jellyfish from predators, which makes sense. Who would attack these creatures? The trevally can also get inside the jellyfish. Okay, maybe this happens by accident. Scientists are not yet sure what led to this, but it's perfectly normal for fish to use jellyfish for food, protection, and traveling. So, can this fish actually control a jellyfish? Come on, jellyfish, forward. I said forward. Forward, not down. Damn that voice control. A fish surrounded by jellyfish. What's next, Steve? Will you tell me furry snakes exist? What do you mean they do? After hearing that some dinosaurs were covered in feathers, I shouldn't be surprised at all. So a furry snake. This creature, about 24 inches long, was discovered in a swamp in Thailand, and the locals were amazed to see it. The snake swam in dirty water, and it seemed to feel quite comfortable. But how can a reptile get fur anyway? Before you think about bad ecology or gene mutations, I must say this happens quite often. You must have seen the stones covered with some kind of algae. The same thing happened here, only we have a snake instead of stones. Yes, this gorgeous green fur is just algae. While it's not entirely clear how long it took the snake to grow such thick fur, whether it bothers it, and whether it comes off when the snake sheds, scientists haven't figured it out yet. When it comes to turtles, everything is a bit simpler. Algae grow on their shells naturally because algae don't really care where to grow, on a rock or on a turtle. However, vegetation can hide infections or injuries and excessive algae buildup can prevent the turtle from absorbing ultraviolet radiation and heat. Oh, and don't forget that even a shell is periodically renewed, that is, the old scoots are gradually replaced by new ones. If algae grow under partially shed scoots, the shell will begin to rot. It's roughly like pus under the nail. Ugh. In short, that's nasty. This is how the next weird thing I'll tell you about was discovered. In May 1822, Count Christian Ludwig von Bachmer shot a stork that was flying over his lands in northern Germany. But the most ordinary hunting literally changed the ideas mankind had about many animal species. Von Bachmer discovered the stork had a spear running through its neck a simple wooden spear about three feet long. And let me remind you, it was the 19th century. If you're not very versed in history, I'll give you a simple example. Three years after the incident with the stork, the world witnessed the first steam locomotive, which hauled the first passenger train. That is, the times of spears in most countries were long gone, but the stork von Bothmer shot was really pierced with a spear, though the vital organs were all intact. A local university professor determined that the spear originated in Africa. That is, some hunter wounded a stork and then it flew around 2,000 miles before it reached the lands of the Count. 2,000 miles! 
But this story is not only about a damn resilient bird and incredible coincidences. Thanks to the stork, people finally realized how these seasonal migrations of birds work. Because the earlier theories were, well, let's just say not very convincing. It was believed the birds shed their feathers and wait out winter in burrows, or at the bottom of ponds, or morph into a different species, or become a tree. How could anyone ever come up with this? Some of the scientists of the 17th century even suggested that in winter, birds fly away to the moon. Well, let's be grateful to this nameless stork. He revealed the truth. Imagine what crazy theories the scientists of the past would come up with if they discovered, I don't know, a puma drifting somewhere on an iceberg? This isn't something I came up with now. In July 2021, in the Los Glaciares National Park in Argentina, tourists actually saw a puma drifting on an iceberg. The wildcat was crossing Lake Argentino. Although it hardly planned this, most likely the puma just climbed onto the iceberg to rest alone. And it just started floating. But a couple centuries ago, scientists would have thought pumas regularly use icebergs for transportation. And maybe they also pay penguins. If, of course, people had already discovered penguins by then. Hey Steve, when did explorers first see penguins? Well, Steve says it was back in 1487 or 1488 on an expedition to the Cape of Good Hope. Just think about it. People already knew about penguins. But at the same time, they believed that birds migrated to the moon. The history of science is weird. Actually, there are more unusual, even outright mind-blowing discoveries. You can stumble upon them anywhere, anytime. How do you like a humpback whale lying in the middle of a mangrove forest? Blows my mind. You can imagine what Brazilian fishermen felt when they found this humpback whale carcass in the forest. It lay more than 50 feet away from the shore, plus there were trees around. You must admit, whales aren't supposed to be there. But there was a simple, logical explanation behind this. No, the whale didn't decide to become a land animal and went too far. Apparently, it was a baby whale that got lost at sea and died for some reason. The tides washed his body to the shore, but during this season, the water level rises almost 13 feet twice a day, flooding the forests. Usually, it brings all sorts of garbage with it. Well, it brought a humpback whale this time. And when it seems that a whale in the forest is the most absurd thing that could happen on this planet, we saw this. A whale in a desert. About 93 miles southwest of Cairo lies Wadi al-Hitan, the site with 1,500 marine animal fossils. The place is surrounded by sand dunes where desert plants grow and desert animals live. In the middle of the typical desert landscape, you can see whales. A huge number of fossilized whales that have been preserved so well you can even study some stomach contents. Keep in mind the fossils are more than 40 million years old. But it's their age that helps answer the most logical question. What the hell are whales doing in the desert? If you look at a suggested map of the world during the Eocene era, it becomes clear that modern deserts used to be part of the sea. Well, or the sea coast. By the way, remember how in one of the videos I said the ancestors of whales got out on land, then changed their minds and returned to the water? Well, the discoveries in Wadi al-Hatan help scientists understand the evolution of cetaceans, because it was in this region that ancient animals went through their intermediate stages. Well, you know, turning from hippos with crocodile-like snouts to normal whales. I'll be honest, after whales in the desert, whales in the forest, moles inside fish, and pumas on ice, it's hard to imagine a less likely place where a creature could end up. But every time I think, that's it, nature can't surprise me anymore, it proves it can. And it's always unexpected. Something like raining fish. In 2014, this rain fell on one of the villages of Sri Lanka. Fish literally fell from the sky, quite good to be eaten. Although the locals were surprised, they were certainly happy. Perhaps the raining fish didn't even shock them that much. In 2012, South Sri Lanka witnessed rainfall of prawns. Yeah, local rainfalls made for a good fish menu. But how come animals suddenly begin to fall from the sky, the place where they aren't supposed to be? Flying fish species have nothing to do with that. Throughout the history of mankind, there have been rains like that, with fish, 
spiders, frogs, toads, worms, octopuses, jellyfish, shells, and starfish as precipitation. One of the most common theories suggests tornadoes and water spouts are to blame for that. The wind sucks in animals. Mind you, they're always small and light, not like cows. And then carries them over a long distance and drops them. There are often storms before raining animals, which confirms the theory. By the way, a curious fact, sometimes animals even survive the fall, but only if they didn't fly for too long. Their size helps them. When you're small and light enough, even a fall from a great height won't result in dire complications. Just remember the ability of ants to survive falling from a skyscraper. I think I mentioned it in one of the earlier videos. Or not. Then I definitely need to make a video about this. See you later.